Okay, here we go. I think we're started. Sorry, took me a little minute there to figure it out. Okay, um, so trend analysis assignment. When we started the class, I told you there would be two big lecture days. The trend analysis lecture is the second big lecture day. This paper is um, big. It's a 200 point paper and we are going to start with it, start getting into it today. So I would take notes if I were you as you watch the video because there is not an assignment sheet that goes with this video. So as we go through it, you can go at your own pace, of course, and take notes as we go. So, uh, here, hang on. Um, so for most people, the terms trend and fad are used interchangeably. Like when you think of a trend, sometimes people will say, well, that's such a fad or that's such a trend. And they're not actually the same thing. Um, when the media tells us like what's hot, they label these things as trends, but they're actually fads usually. Um, somebody who wears the latest fashion or has like new music on their, on their iPod or on their phone or um, on their Spotify account, like they're called trendy, but really we would, if we were speaking correctly, we would say they're um, like fatty people, like with the fads. Um, so when you think of trend, we're actually going to think of it a little bit differently. Um, so it could just be a discussion of semantics. When we talk about semantics, we're talking about like um, words, but there is actually a difference between fads and trends. Um, the person who created this slideshow, the teacher who created it, used um, Dr. Dre on Encore um, and, he, and said for that we need to look no further than sociologist Dr. Dre, the title song from an Eminem album, um, and the lyrics that this teacher cited, they go like this, I trend, I set one every time I'm in, I go out and just come back full circle again, you a fad, that means you something that we already had. But once you're gone, you don't come back. Too bad, you're off the map now. Radar can't even find you. So trends have staying power and fads go. They leave, they don't stick, they don't change society. They're just something that kind of happened quickly and then they leave. Um, fads are short-term fanaticisms, like a blip in culture and time whereby it seems the whole world is joined in the same craze. Um, exciting and as electric as they are, they burn out fast. So like when you were, um, you know, in, in elementary school or middle school, there were probably fads like silly bands. That was a fad. Everybody had those silly rubber bands for a while and then they're just gone. Or I think there were those shoes with like, wheels on them, Heelys, you know, that's a fad. Like everybody wants that. And then they burn out, it goes away. Um, so fads, people, everybody goes crazy for it for a little while and then they burn out. Um, a fad is a fast and furious practice, product or interest, um, like interest, maybe like Pokemon Go, right? That was a fad a couple summers back. Um, it's fueled by tremendous hype and then followed by a deep decline. Usually it's isolated to a few market segments or particular demographic groups, usually like youth, younger people. Um, fads are self-contained, short-lived phenomena. As Dre points out, fads are generally not missed once they're gone. Like we don't sit around and say, oh, I you know, really miss my silly bands. And, um, fads are usually look back and you think, why did I even care so much about that? We want fad amnesia to forget them and bury them away, at least until the next generation revives them as a retro goof. Um, they stand for a certain point in time that we have moved past. Trends though, when we do this paper, we want to focus on trends. Trends may represent long-term changes or movements that are substantial to society. They become part of our DNA. 
even though they may begin with just a few people, the trend setters. Um, a trend definitely is something that lasts, you know, more than a year. A trend is like, you can trace it back 20 years, 30 years, um, as it slowly has changed us. Like, like portable technology, like my phone. Portable technology is a trend. It hasn't been around for thousands of years, but it definitely has changed the way we do things. Um, a trend is a slow, steady development. The things that, that, that a trend is characterized by are new ways of doing business, um, new lifestyle practices, the changing needs of customers, and new products or services rendering the old one obsolete. So if you think about it this way, like trends, you know, we can do business now like on our phones. You can pay on Apple Pay like on your phone. That's a new way of doing business or a new lifestyle practice um, like listening to all of the music that you want to listen to on your phone. Um, the changing needs of customers. Well, you know, portable technology, we, we need cases for our phones. We need screen protectors for our phones. Like that is a whole another market segment that's been created because of this trend. Um, trends don't usually generate as much enthusiasm as fads and they take longer to develop. They're definitely longer lasting and far more widespread. Um, Instead of plummeting to their demise, many trends evolve into permanent shifts in the ways we live, work, and interact with others. Lots of types of trends exist. Industry trends, economic trends, societal trends, cultural, demographic, and technological. Um, I've had students do a paper on like debt. Debt is a trend. Everybody has debt, unfortunately. The government, um, graduated, you know, college students, like, and then there's a whole industry attached to debt, debt management and um, credit card, you know, management and um, Dave Ramsey um, is a whole industry that exists because people have debt. Um, different trends. Some people say like cancer is a trend. There are so many types of cancers. It's not a positive trend, but there's a whole industry connected to cancer, research connected to cancer. Like if cancer was eradicated, a lot of people would be out of jobs. Um, so thinking about like different types of trends, because you will choose one for your paper, they can span a lot of different categories. So what are you looking for? Some service, product, behavior, or value that extends in one direction and follows a course that is traceable over time. So um, more and more people are doing this, they're respecting this, they're buying this, like you have to be able to see that line. Um, there should be a prevailing, second bullet point, a line of movement that has a prevailing inclination, a statistically detectable change. Um, a shift or veer in a new direction that is more than a current style or preference. So fads span several categories. Um, fads are often in fashion and lifestyle. We want trends that so would be thinking of trends so both trends and fads they begin on the fringe on the outside and they move toward the mainstream but fads fall away and trends continue to penetrate larger groups with lasting effects so maybe a few people you know start out with this trend but but it's eventually it penetrates and everybody is participating um, an example portable music trend Way back in the 80s, it started with the boom box. Like, people would carry these big boom boxes on their shoulders and they could carry music with them. That was the first time in history that you can carry your music with you. Then that evolved into um, the 90s Walkman. And then, so a Walkman, like, you know, had a cord and and then um, you have the iPod, and then the iPhone, and then the smartwatch. Like you can listen to music now from your watch. 
Um, the hardware has been replaced with more popular and portable devices. This trend is rocked steady for decades and may already be classified as a permanent shift in society. Um, trendsetters get the ball rolling, like the first geeks who began file sharing on the internet in the mid-90s. They led to the digitalization of music, which has built new industries and changed the way most of us consume music. Trends have staying power. So as you are thinking about a trend, think of something that has staying power. If it just came, if it was just something that's happened in the last few months, it's probably not a trend yet. Um, trend watcher, so that's what you're going to become. Um, a trend watcher uses analysis to understand what's behind, that should say trend, sorry, what is behind the trend. Examine why the trend is here, why do we have it, where did it come from. Um, predict and evaluate what its prospects are for trend hood. Um, and a trend watcher is wary of the latest hype and media spin, which sometimes tries to portray minor movements as national sensations. Some tips to help you as you are thinking about choosing a trend. First, you have to prove that it exists. Prove that it actually is a trend. You'll do that in your paper. There will be a proof section where you're proving to me, yep, more people are doing this, more people are buying this. Um, I've had people do like vegan lifestyle as a trend or um, organic eating or organic living as a trend or people have done fitness as a trend or obesity as a trend like you have to be able to prove that more people are being affected by this um, second determine what's driving the trends development what's driving it what what is pushing it to grow um, trends are fueled by a myriad of strategic factors, um, a confluence of events that culminate and fortify one another to produce fertile ground for the trends to take hold. So you can't say one thing causes a trend. There are probably many different causes. Um, it could be technological innovations, government regulations or deregulations. You know, if the government has changed regulations or has removed regulations, does that help fuel the trend? Um, economic developments, demographic shifts, um, lifestyle changes, new values, attitudes, and preferences. Like all of those things could cause trends. Um, for example, it took producing a mid-market SUV. So SUV wasn't even an automotive category like 30 years ago. And now um, almost every automobile maker makes an SUV. Um, in that category. Um, the same goes for the home computer. In the 70s, computers were too clunky and most people couldn't have them. And now, you know, even in my home, we have like four computers. And 30 years ago, most homes didn't even have a computer. The third thing you'll do is you'll make a convincing case for the cause. Like, you'll have to show me research to back up the cause. This is an entirely research based paper. You won't write I, me, my, no first person. It will all be third person based on research. Fourth, you'll identify the trend's level of influence. So is it isolated to one or two market segments or populations, or is it broadly based? Like, is it affecting the entire society, or is it in a smaller group? And how does it replicate across other groups and societies? Um, fads fade. Right? So remember that. But trends transcend and manifest them through an array of related tendencies and culture. So you need to chart your trends, connections to other categories and cultures. Sorry, that's a bad slide. But um, is your trend progressing or regressing? Because if it's regressing, it's probably not good for your paper. Trends steadily progress and build momentum over time. Um, take hip hop, a two prong trend in companies encompassing entertainment and lifestyle preferences. While in its heyday for the mainstream, rap actually made its way onto the music scene in the 80s. Had hip hop been a fad, it would have come and gone and come and gone, but it's actually become an entire music genre and lifestyle. Um, hip hop has proven itself as a highly profitable business of music, movies, apparel, 